What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we have something very near and dear to my heart, and that is some Doom Terminator Vulcan stuff, not even on my own account. This is coming from one of our viewers, and did they do it minimally, and probably can do a lot more minimally, so... <laughs> Yeah, uh, Karma has given us these screenshots of his Celian 30 clear with Doom Terminator Vulcan. Oh my god, he crushed it with this, and no, it did not include Giant Killer. Just like us, we did it with a B-minus hero copy. Well, he did it, but with even less support. So hopefully you guys enjoy this, and make sure you guys take one second, hit that subscribe button. We definitely made a mistake now on our endgame tier list because Vulcan should be number one and Aspen should not. Let's get into it. So here is the hero. A lot weaker than the one we used. Or actually, no, the power is very similar, but the heroes you're going to see that went along with him... Uh, yeah, those are gonna be a lot, a lot lower here, because I think, I don't know if we got a screenshot of the battle. Oh, yes, we do. We got one of them, too, so I'll have to save that to the folder so we can watch that and show that at the very end. But this hero crushed it. Now, as far as artifacts goes and things like that, uh, I believe it was done with Melodic Strings up to 30-1. After that, he used a Splendid Crown, and then for Spo uh Stone, he used a skill damage, attack, attack, skill damage, absolutely killer. On a Vulcan, you could even do the really better option, which is like skill damage and precision stone or skill damage holy stone. Those are really, really good for Vulcan as well. But you can see 11 million attack, not a ton of speed because we're not running a speed stone or a speed artifact. And about 700 million attack. Uh, that, the, the, or sorry, not attack, HP. The HP is kind of important here because I think we've done it on someone else's that had like 450-ish. And we kind of kept dying on the final battle. One thing to note, though, with the crown, you get insane survivability. Now, you'll notice down here, I mean, we got some X upgrades available, I think, Actually, let me take a look. I don't remember if it actually showed what X level he was. Uh, actually, I don't think he has any X levels at all. So this is no X levels whatsoever either. Um, regular resonance gear, so just one star resonance gear. Uh, but he did have a mythic skin. That is one little side note. Now, as far as the awaken copy, not even a very good attack roll either. Like it's a B minus, but like. Eesh. It could be a lot higher of a roll, but skill damage and control immunity, both of those are really, really huge. The skill damage is amazing. Like I said, stack skill damage on this man. You're going to do some crazy damage numbers. And control immunity is good. Uh, I think I think they have like a petrify ability on this too. So that is something that's a nice little bonus. The enabling is where it gets interesting. So we need to have make sure we have speed enough to go faster than the enemy. But what we're going to be doing is running mark removal for the E3 enable because, well, they put the healing curse on us. And again, that's why it's important to go first because end of round, we cleanse off those healing curses. Next round, we have balance strike to give us absolutely huge healing. It's very similar to what we ran on our clear if you guys actually watched that one. So that's something to note. Uh, beyond that, we have Tomb Terminator Vulcan all the way to V4 here. Now, I believe what we're running is crit damage. Holy damage and no damage reduction cr no crit damage damage reduction and holy I believe let me actually take a look in game here I'm gonna bring mine up real quick so we have crit damage damage reduction and I believe the last one is going to be holy damage yes so we was running holy damage on that as well so that's a uh, it's pretty good setup there no skill damage here I think because he already had it on like the artifact. Uh, or sorry, not the artifact. He had it on the stone. He had it on the imprint, all those fun things, the awakening copy. And then, of course, you see here we have a full tree sublimed out. No core. The core only gives him bonus stats for HP and attack. It doesn't actually do anything in this combat. And, of course, he had completely full tenants. He has skins, it looks like, on everybody that had the skin possible. Has a decent copy, and everybody is Origin 5, just like we talked about before. Origin 5 is a huge boost to your stats the aura was not that much though and then you can see here this is the part i love to see the most level 100 michelle level 100 michelle level 100 michelle level 100 michelle and level 100 bell rain if you guys remember we actually did this with like 
I think we threw like a couple Andreas in our Lord of Fear Aspen, but again, he was like fully tenant out with like a flag, so we didn't survive. Eos, in reality, these heroes are probably going to help better than throwing in your flag heroes that are used for tenants for them because, yeah, these are going to give you a lot of those freezing layers. And as you guys remember, one thing I want to note why this is so good, we're going to actually just jump into the game here. You're going to see my boulder and everything, but why this is so important? Well, we're going to go to his uh, last skill here. When an ally or enemy dies, there's a 100% chance to gain one lair of freezing. Caps at two. So, yes, you might be like doing an overkill here, but anytime you cap, you get uh, increased attack. You remove two random debuffs from yourself in game immunity fear. That one's not too bad, but also, whenever you cap a charge energy, you get 50 energy instantly. So, that means you're going to get it in round one. You're going to get a cap of bonus energy after you uh, potentially release an active. And then, round two, if you use a round two active, you're going to gain more energy after that. And the fact that he is just so tanky is just absolutely mind boggling. He said it didn't even take him that many attempts either like and it doesn't surprise me honestly he, he then hard swapped everything over to a star swordsman mockman but uh yeah this is the team right here again no x levels pretty well done but because he said it was so easy uh, i don't even think he said he had gear or artifacts or anything like that on the hero so just really really impressive and i think this is another reason why we can just say Vulcan is the best hero. Now, if you guys remember on our tier list that we did for pure endgame, we put, I think it was Lord of Fear Aspen number one. Yeah, we had Lord of Fear Aspen number one at doing Sea Land 30s, and we had Doom Terminator Vulcan at two. This one right here, these screenshots, uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely easier than the Lord of Fear Aspen because the Lord of Fear Aspen, I think, had giant killer i think there might be one clear without it but it was with a lot more power a lot more tanky and support carries built into the team as well and uh yeah at this point this is just such a better option here so one last time you guys can pause it you can take a look if you want to emulate this if you want to do something very similar you could run crit, but again, he's probably going to be crapping out on crit anyway. The most important part is balance strike right here on the E5 for tons of healing. You're basically full healing every single round. And then on top of that, right down here, you have that purify for marks to get rid of the Amon Ra healing curses that those purple little monsters send your way. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Hopefully it helps you guys clear it if you still need to. Uh, I'm absolutely on the Vulcan train, and I'll see you guys next time.